This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Come in. Oh, come right in, Mr. Adams. How are you this morning, Mr. Parker? Fine, just fine. I don't have to guess what you're here about, do I? No, I don't suppose you do. Well, Mr. Parker, all you have to do to renew the fire insurance on your building is just sign this form. Here you are. Mr. Adams, all I have to do is sign that form if I were going to renew the policies. Oh, now come, Mr. Parker. You're not going to switch to another company, are you? No, I'm not switching to another company. I've just decided not to carry any more fire insurance on my building. Oh, now I know you're kidding. That building of yours is much too valuable not to be heavily insured. And the machinery in it, Mr. Parker, you'd lose a fortune if anything ever happened to that. I've had that building and machinery covered for three years, and nothing has happened to it so far. Oh, perhaps not, but a fire could break out at any time today, tomorrow, next week. Just think what a tragedy that would be. If your policy lapses at noon today, you can't be serious about not renewing. I am serious, Mr. Adams. I'm sorry, but that's my decision. Well, all right, Mr. Parker, it's your decision and it's your building. But if it burns down any time after 12 o'clock noon today, it's also your loss. And now meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Blackie, this is a lovely view from your window. But I've stared at it so long, it's staring back. How soon can we go out and eat? In just a little while, Mary. I have to finish this letter to Shorty. Hmm. Hmm. A long letter to the short one. (laughs) That's mixed up, isn't it? Kind (laughs) of. Hurry up, will you? I'll stare at the view some more. Go see who that is, will you, Mary? Sure, sure. It's probably somebody from the lovely view to complain about me staring at it. Might be someone from down in the street who thought you were a lovely view. Well, you say the nicest things to me. (laughs) When you're so busy, you don't know what you're saying. Uh, yes? Uh, This is Boston Blackie's apartment. It is, and that's Blackie right over there at his desk. Oh, yes, of course. I I didn't see him. There have been people who couldn't see me, some who wouldn't, Mm -hmm. but you're the first fellow who didn't. Oh, hello. Hello. We've met, haven't we, Mr... Uh, Yes, my name is Gardner. Blackie, Robert Gardner. I met you at that party at your friend Charlie Kingston's penthouse last month. Oh, yes, that's right. You and a fellow named Jim Parker are in business together, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. We own a large factory building on 11th Street. Of course. Oh, this is Miss Wesley, Mr. Gardner. Miss Wesley. Wesley. How do you do, Mr. Gardner? Well, Gardner, is there something I can do for you? Yes, Blackie. I I, I wouldn't ask you this if I went desperate. (laughs) It's a little embarrassing, but I am... Well, I guess everybody in town knows I'm broke. Blackie, I've got to have $25,000, and I've got to have it fast. $25,000? Yes. You came to me for $25,000? Well, that's a little out of my class, Gardner. If a thousand will do you any good... No, no, Blackie, no. A thousand won't be a bit of good. It it has to be 25000 at least. Well, I'm afraid I can't swing that. You say everyone in town knows you're broke. Why, I understand that you and your partner, Parker, are pretty well off. Parker is, but I'm not. Really, the only thing I have is my half-ownership of that building, and the machinery on 11th Street is worth a lot of money, Blackie, but but right now what I need is cash. Mortgage? I've already done that, Blackie. My wife is the reason I have no money, and, and the reason I need money now. She's demanding things I can't afford to give her, and, and I've got to buy them for her. She'll leave me, and I, I can't let that happen. No, I suppose not. Tell you what I'll do. You've met Charlie Kingston. Yes. Why don't you ask him for the money? Use your interest in your firm as security. You think Mr. Kingston would lend me the money? He might. Try. Can't do any harm. It might be a good investment for Charlie. I'll call him and tell him you'll be up. Oh, thanks, Blackie. I'll see him first thing in the morning. Thanks a lot. Don't thank me. I haven't done anything. Yes, yes, you have. You've given me hope of getting that $25,000, and you don't know how much I need it. I, I'd do almost anything to get it. Well, goodbye, Blackie. And goodbye, Miss Wesley. It's nice to have met you. Goodbye. Goodbye and lots of luck. Uh, luck, Miss Wesley. I don't need that. I need money. 
Oh, that man is desperate, Blackie. Yes, Mary, and there are 25,000 reasons why. What, Robert? What did you say? I said you could have that new coat you wanted, Harriet. Oh, now, Robert, please don't make such stupid statements. No, it's true. Where would you get the money? Well, I, I, I'm going to get it. I, I saw Boston Blackie a little while ago. And he's going to give it to you? Well, never mind about that. The money's as good as in my pocket right now. The money for the coat and, and, and a whole lot more. Oh, why, darling, how sweet of you. I'll go down and pick out the coat this very afternoon. Good. Now, you're sure you're not joking about having the money? This time tomorrow, sweetheart, I'll be rich. See you for dinner. Oh, you know you will now. Goodbye, darling. Bye, Harriet. <laughs> guess who that was and what he wanted, Jim. I don't have to guess, darling. I know. It was your ever-loving husband. He was bribing you to stay with him. Well, what a lovely one-handed conversation it was, too. One-handed, Jim? I don't understand. You were holding the telephone receiver with one hand, and the other was busy holding my hand. <laughs> You're my husband's partner, aren't you? That's my part in the partnership. You love me, don't you? Uh-huh. Enough to be Mrs. Jim Parker one of these days? Could be. I haven't quite decided to leave Robert yet, especially now. Harriet, you will leave him one of these days and come to me. I have more money right now than your dear husband has ever seen. I know. Your money is one of the reasons I... Oh, oh, that may be Robert. He may have been phoning from across the street. You'd better get out of here. All right. Uh, out the back way quickly. All right. All right. Oh, but listen, Harriet. If I give you a reason to leave Robert, will you do oh, it? Oh, stop worrying about it, Jim, and get out of here. All right. Bye, darling. Goodbye. Coming, coming. Oh. This is Robert Gardner? Yes. I'm Boston Blackie. Oh, my. How thrilling. It might be at that, Mrs. Gardner. May I come in? Hmm? I should say. Ah, maybe you should, but not like that. You're here to see my husband? No, Mrs. Gardner, I'm here to see you. Your husband came to me this morning trying to borrow $25,000. Fine. I could use $25,000. It should buy a lot of things, don't you think? I can tell you right now what it's going to buy, Mrs. Gardner. Trouble. And a few furs and jewels, perhaps? Having them might be worth a little trouble. Mrs. Gardner, I know it's no business of mine to come here like this, but my friend Mary Wesley suggested... Never mind what your friend Mary suggested, Blackie. Let me make a little suggestion. Let me run my own life. I'd let you run your life, Mrs. Gardner, except that I'm sure you'll ruin your husband's. Get away! Get away from that south wall, man! The flames have weakened those girders, and the walls are about to come down! Look out! There it goes! Oh, that was close. All the men out of the building okay? Okay. Number five and six trucks, turn your hose on the side of the building where the wall fell. We don't want that fire to spread to the next building. Hello, Chief. How's everything? Oh, shoe Inspector Faraday. Well, we've been fighting the fire since 845, but we'll have it out in no time. It's under control now. You've got work to do on this one, Inspector. Yeah? Why? Well, this fire didn't start by itself, Faraday. It was set. Arson? That's what they call it. And I think it's slightly illegal. Hey, what's this? Hey, you in the car! Keep moving! No parking here. But I'm part owner of this building! Oh, uh, that's different. I understand your partners are out somewhere. Hey, what happened? How did it start? Can't, can't you say anything? Take it easy, fella. Take it easy. What's your name? Gardner. Robert Gardner. Robert! Yeah, Robert, they finally got in touch with you. Jim, oh, Jim, this is terrible. Oh, you don't know how terrible. Hey, who's this guy? Parker, Jim Parker, my partner. He's the other half owner of this building. Well, from here, it looks like all you guys own is a pile of ashes. Well, it's not as bad as it seems, Inspector. The building and everything in it is insured. Well, that's good. No, that's bad. It was insured, Robert. Jim! Like a fool, I let the policy lapse at noon today. Oh, Miss 
time, will you, Harriet? Why aren't you home? Uh, excuse me, huh? sir. Oh, sorry, I frightened you, sir, but this note was left for you at seven o'clock this evening. I thought it might be important. I didn't mean to disturb you, what with the fire, Lord. Oh, thanks, Martin. Any word for Mrs. Gardner this evening? Uh, no, sir. That's strange. I've called her at her home several times tonight and got no answer. Well, I'll try her again in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Who brought the note, Martin? Um, a messenger, sir. Oh. Wonder what it is. Hmm. By the smell of it, it's from a young lady. An attractive young lady. Yes, sir. Let's see if it's an attractive message, too. Hmm. I was right about the lady being attractive, Martin. It's from Mrs. Gardner. Oh, splendid. Perhaps it explains why you aren't able to reach her tonight. I hope so. Yes, it says, I've decided to leave him at once. We'll meet you at your office at 8.30 tonight. Oh, oh Mr. Parker, sir, you're so pale. What's the matter? What's the matter, Martin? It's Mrs. Gardner. If she was to meet me at my office at 8.30, she was caught in a fire. She's dead. I've had guys sitting here in my office till they grew beards because I wouldn't talk. So you better start talking. But I tell you, Inspector Faraday, I didn't set fire to my building. Oh, you didn't, huh? No. You're not getting anywhere with him this way, Faraday. Quiet, Blanky. Quiet? Why? You didn't ask me down here to be quiet, did you? No, all I want you to tell me is that Gardner came to you asking for money this morning, that's all. Yes, and I told you he did. And I admit I did, but, but that's all I admit. I didn't set fire to my building. Why should I? Why should you? I'll yes. tell you why. You needed money. But the building wasn't insured. I got no money from it. I know. But you didn't know the building wasn't insured. You didn't know it till after the fire. Did you deny that? Oh, no, I, I don't deny that. Uh, you'd better not. Because I was right there when you heard the news. And you admitted then it was the first you'd heard of it. You said you were ruined. And you also said this would be the end of you and your wife. Now, uh, just what was the meaning of that crack, anyhow? About my wife. Yeah. Uh, ask my partner, Jim Parker, about that. He'll tell you. What does he know about it? He knows my wife was ready to leave me. In fact, I think she was going to leave me for him. The reason I went to Blackie was because I wanted money for her. Oh, is that so? Yes. Well, you know what you're doing, don't you? You're admitting you burned down your building to get money for your wife. Blackie, make him believe I didn't set fire to that building. I'd like to do that, Gardner, but... Uh, but you can't. Nobody can. Because he did set fire to that building. He needed money. He admits that. He thought the building was insured. He admits that. He set fire to that building. He... Ah, Faraday, he doesn't admit that. No, and I'm not going to. Well, I'll tell you something. You are going to. You're going to jail. No, no, I didn't. I... Blackie, can't you help me? I don't know, Gardner. I'll try. But whoever did set that fire certainly made it hot for you. And now back to Boston Blackie. When Boston Blackie was unable to lend Robert Gardner $25,000, he knew that Gardner would do something desperate to get the money. But he didn't think he'd go so far as to set fire to a building for the insurance money. What Blackie didn't know, though, was that Jim Parker, Gardner's partner, had allowed the insurance to lapse and had himself set fire to the building in a plan to ruin Gardner and take Gardner's wife away from him. Gardner's wife, also unaware of Parker's plan, was to meet Parker in the building. And now Parker thinks she died in the flames. Nothing has been said about a body being found in the building, however. And with Robert Gardner in jail for arson, Blackie goes to see Jim Parker. I'd like to see Mr. Parker, please, Mr. James Parker. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, he's not in. You expect him in soon? Um, yes, sir. Would you like to eat? I wouldn't like to, but I will. Very good. Your Parker's butler? Obviously. His new butler. Oh. Well, you know, you aren't exactly the butler type. Odd that you should say that, sir. That's one of Mr. Parker's most frequent complaints about me. 
Say, do you know where Mr. Parker is at the moment? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he's down at the fire. At the fire? Well, uh, at the building, sir, or um, what's left of it. But why? The fire's been out since, since late last night. I know. Mr. Parker didn't say why he was going down to the building. Perhaps he thought you might be there. He thought I'd be there? Yes. You're his partner, Mr. Gardner, aren't you? Uh, yes, yes, I am, of course. Uh, say, uh, maybe you can help me. Well, I'll do anything I can, sir. Well, I've been at police headquarters ever since the fire. My wife's probably tried to get in touch with me and wasn't able to. I wonder if she left any word for me here. I know she didn't, sir. No word for you. Oh, she did leave some word for Mr. Parker? Oh, just the, the, the note. The note? What note? Well, the note was from Mr. Parker saying she wanted to meet him at his office at 8.30 last night. Perhaps I shouldn't be... Never mind what you should or shouldn't say, my friend. And don't bother to tell your master I was here to see him. I'm going down to the fire and tell him so myself. Maybe here. Maybe... It has to be here. Oh, not here. Uh, looking for maybe... something, Parker? Huh? Who are you? What do you want? I'm Boston Blackie, and I want to talk to you. Uh, I, I don't have time to talk right now. Why not? You seem to have time to nose around this pile of burned-up junk. Well, this is my building. This is still my property. Uh, I can do what I want here. Well, maybe I can help you. Looking for anything in particular? No. Then what are you looking for? Nothing. Just, just looking. Looking for nothing? Well, that should take no time. Uh, your partner, Robert Gardner, is looking for something... He's looking for his wife, and I have an idea that's bad. Bad? Why? She's missing. Missing? Where is she? You don't make much sense, Parker. If anyone knew where she was, she wouldn't be missing. I think I have an idea why she's missing. You do? Why? I happen to know she planned to meet you in your office in this building at 8.30 last night. So? So the building caught fire a little after 8.30, when she was supposed to be in your office. That's why you're down here. You know she was supposed to be in your office last night. You think she died in the fire. That's why you're here, to make sure. If you can. I don't know anything about Mrs. Gardner. You know plenty about her, Parker. You wanted her, and I think she was agreeable to leaving her husband for you. I know nothing about it. You know the whole story, Parker, from start to finish. You let the insurance policy on this building lapse and set fire to it, so you destroy Gardner's last hope of being able to support his wife. You knew Gardner's wife would leave him as soon as she saw he was flat broke. You're in a spot, Parker. I am? Why? I'll tell you why. Like a lot of women, maybe Mrs. Gardner was late for her 8.30 appointment with you last night. She was? Maybe. Maybe she got down here just in time to see the building go up in flames and you run out of the place. And maybe she got the very unpleasant thought that you were trying to, um, murder her. She might not like that, Parker. I'd certainly hate to be in your shoes if Mrs. Gardner is alive. Hello, Parker speaking. Hello, Jim. Hello. Who's this? Don't you know me? <clears throat> Don't you know me, darling? No. Who is this? Well, maybe seeing what you tried to do to me has changed my voice a little, darling. Is this Harriet? Oh, you do remember me. Yes. Yes, this is Harriet. Harriet Gardner. This is Harriet? What? What's the matter with your voice? It's my throat. It's raw from all the smoke that got into it during that fire. Oh, oh, I see. Harriet, are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm all right. But you aren't. What do you mean? I mean I saw what you tried to do to me. And I'm going to get you for it. Good night, darling. Harriet, Harriet, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Jim, darling. How are you this morning? Harriet, is that you? Oh, you know my voice right away this time. Why? Were you thinking about...
about me last night? What's the matter with this wire? It's the same thing that's the matter with us. The connection is bad. Look, Harriet, about what you said on the phone last night. What about it? You've got everything all wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. No? Well, I know what I saw. But, but you don't understand. Look, I'll give you $50,000. You always wanted money. I'll give you $50,000. Too late. I don't want to get money now. All I want is to get you. Goodbye, darling. I'll get it, Martin. Uh, yes, Martin. Uh, very good, sir. Hello. Hello, Jim, darling. Spending a quiet evening at home. Harriet. Yes. I waited till this evening to call you. I thought you'd be lonesome. Harriet, listen to me. Why? Because you must. These calls are driving me mad. I'll give you $100,000 to go away. Why, that's twice what you offered me this morning. I know. Will you take it? Why? To keep quiet about what you know and to leave me alone. Oh, I'm going to leave you alone, darling. Very much alone. You are? Yes. This is my last telephone call. And yours, too. I'm going to kill you for what you did to me. And I'm going to kill you tonight. Harriet. Harriet! Martin! 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 Yes, Mr. Parker? Get my car right away. Right away, do you hear? You're going out tonight, sir? Yes, I'm going to police headquarters. Now, uh, go through the whole thing slowly this time, Parker, so the police stenographer can take it all down. All right, Inspector Faraday. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. I set fire to my building. I canceled the fire insurance policy. I uh, canceled it or let it lapse? Let it lapse. Why? It was Robert Gardner's only means of income. I wanted to destroy the building and therefore wipe him out. Why? So that his wife would leave him. I was in love with her and wanted her, but she wouldn't leave him as long as he could support her. Then you set fire to the building yourself. And Gardner had nothing to do with it. Nothing, nothing at all. I did it all myself. It was my idea and I did it all myself. Now protect me, will you? You have your confession. Protect me. Protect you, Parker. From what? From whom? From Mrs. Gardner. She planned to meet me in the building the night of the fire. She saw me set fire to it. She thought I planned to kill her, so she's going to kill me. I don't think she'll kill you, Parker. But she will. She said so herself. She did. When? Just an hour ago on the telephone. She's threatened me three times since the fire. I wonder where she was calling from. She's dead. What? She died in the fire. No. That can't be. It not only can be, Parker, it is. She kept that 8.30 appointment with you and was caught in your office when the building went up in flames. We found her body in the ruins about an hour after we got the fire out. But what if she's dead? Who called me up today and again this evening? Oh, I'll show you. What did you push that buzzer for? Relax. Nothing's going to harm you, Parker. Nothing but the law. Any buzz for us, Faraday? Yeah, Blackie. Come on in. Uh, you too, Miss Wesley. Thanks, Inspector Faraday. Case over? Uh, yes, Miss Wesley. For everybody but Parker here. Uh, with Mrs. Gardner dead, he wants to know who called him up and threatened him. Why, I did. Don't you recognize my voice, darling? It was you? You catch on fast, Parker. But why? Why wasn't I told that Harriet was dead? I've been frantic since the fire. Frantic! But not frantic enough, Parker. Not frantic enough to talk until you thought you yourself were in danger. Yeah. And then you talked, but plenty. Hey, Rollins! Rollins! Rollins, get this guy out of here. Lock him up. Okay, in All right, all right, right, but you don't have to push me. You don't have to... <laughs> well... I solved another one, eh, Blackie? You solved another one? Yeah. Whose idea was it that Robert Gardner was innocent? Okay, it was yours. But I was ready to let him go. In fact, I'm going to let him go now. Sure, after a trick of mine, forced Parker to confess. And whose idea was it not to reveal that we'd found the body in the fire so that the killer would go crazy wondering whether or not Mrs. Gardner was dead? All right, that was your idea, too. But I agreed it would work, didn't I? Yes, I'll give you credit for that much. But whose idea was it? Hey, we... Just a minute, you two. Why are you passing out compliments? Don't forget me. If it was my voice that fooled Mr. Parker, I'd like to hear either one of you impersonate a woman, dead or alive. <laughs> so how about a little bit of credit for me? Well, I'll give you lots of credit, Miss Wesley. Yes, Faraday. Give Mary the credit. But see that you give Parker the works. <laughs>
Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.